ますけど。How's it going, Alex? Absolutely, S S C tester. Absolutely, and I've been getting a lot of these really large conference requests for proposals. So the big corporations, trade shows, all that—they've been coming back.、Um, but with all the new mask mandates and. Now they're saying they're not sure. We won't go into shutdowns again. We'll see what happens. And just a quick note, because I do have to focus on the actual editing. I will answer all questions, but、uh, this is a premiere event.、Uh, I was hired by Westfield, the mall company. So I'm not the house photographer for Caesar or Discovery, which was great because I did not have to shoot the step and repeat. I got to shoot candies of the step and repeat.、Um, I'm not a fan of shooting step and repeats.、Uh, it's fine. It's not a big deal, but it's not as creative as other types of duties while being an event photographer. Guys, let me know if you can hear me okay too, because I have the mic kind of far away, kind of. Trying to be zoned in on my work. Yeah, I got to pseudo watch the first episode. You know, I was focusing on photographing, but、um, it was a nice show. You guys know I like dogs. I think so. It was a fun job. You're very welcome. Were there any particular tips that stood out for you? I always try to think of like game-changing tips, you know, like not to get into the weeds, although that's important too. But it's like when I teach jujitsu, I I always think what will have the most bang for the buck, since I usually only cover classes. I'm not planning a curriculum. So when I'm only doing a one-off class, I think, what can have the most profound changes on someone's jujitsu game? And I think it's good to do the same for photography. So you guys can probably see, I don't have them looking at me too much, and that was because they just didn't need me to do those shots.、Um, so I wasn't going to call for attention. If he looked at the camera, great, but if not, that wasn't a big deal.
Uh, I think you mean my event photography checklist? Some of these would have made a good thumbnail, but I was in a bit of a rush. No flash. At all. Uh, the event... It's hard to talk with music in your... The event was from uh, 4 p.m. to 7, and so I knew I very unlikely would... It would be very unlikely I would need flash. Uh, let me just take these headphones off for a sec. I knew it wouldn't be likely I would need flash, um, and I was hired to do a specific type of coverage. So what I did is I brought two bags. One was my large camera bag, and then I brought a smaller bag. And when I got to the job site, I transferred all the large, transferred what I knew I'd need from the large bag to the small bag, knowing I could always go to the parking garage and get stuff if I needed. Um, so I basically packed, um, I packed according to my expectations of what I would need. And I was correct, um, I didn't need a flash. They specifically said they don't really need those like posed photos of groups, which sometimes I use a flash for, depending. Um, so in other words, I knew I'd be able to just shoot at like f1.2 um, once it got a little later in the day because because I was mostly shooting candids. All right.
So by the way, anyone watching, I know I've been doing a lot of live streaming and haven't been posting as much content outside of that, but I actually posted like three videos on my Patreon page last week that you can check out. Thank you, Alex. It means a lot to me. I don't really make money on live streams unless people actually tip. So, but I've just enjoyed doing it. But when I talk the entire time, I found I end up I end up really exhausted. It's a cute guy right there. <laughs> Experience is good. I mean, you got to find out for yourself what you like too, right? There's a process, you know? Like, I'm at a point where... I've been thinking a lot about this. I'm at a point where I'm shooting a certain type of work more and more. You know, there's a career path. But nobody's going to start shooting, like, a big corporate event, a big trade show or anything. They're just not going to get that kind of a job. Um, it's a it's a grind to get the experience in the portfolio um, so that you can do that kind of job and it's even kind of a double-edged sword because you need the portfolio to book the type of work so it's not easy um, I'm looking forward to shooting like small family events again um, just so I think it would be more relatable to what most of you guys are shooting that are watching my channel because they're pursuing event photography. Absolutely. So if you're doing something non-paid, um, my thoughts, my personal thoughts on it, if you're an experienced photographer, use it to push the envelope and try different things, you know, new ways of shooting, really challenge your ideas about what works. Um, if you're not that experienced, I would recommend pretending it's an event and shooting it as if you're the paid photographer. Um, meaning you're getting full coverage, you're getting all your different shot types, capturing the key moments, etc.
Um, I've used a lot of different lenses. So, I don't think that there's like, um, sometimes I change my setup just to change it and I shoot differently than I would, uh, just to keep the job interesting. Um, like, I decided, like I shot this job without a medium telephoto, I, I left the 24 to 70 in the car. I knew I'd have the space to move around uh, to shoot with like mostly a 50 millimeter almost the entire time. And then my second camera had a 17 to 40 on it to get the wide shots I knew my client needed. And then I would also put on a 135 millimeter, which you'll see later more of. Um, actually, this is with that. Um, so, you know, you can always play it safe and show up with like a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200. You can shoot with multiple primes, although it can make your job not necessarily more difficult, but you'll just have to adapt to those lenses and work differently. So your question was, what do I like for street stuff? And I don't know what you mean by that exactly. I, I assume you mean like an open air type of event not street photography because you mentioned being hired for or that you're uh, volunteering so I don't know let me know what a uh, little bit more info maybe I can be more helpful Honestly, so you guys know I've been shooting with this 50 millimeter 1.2, which has blown me away, like how good it is really. Um, by no means do you need something like it to do this job, but it's allowed me to work in a very specific way that I couldn't have before. Um, it's so technically gorgeous, but still has character. Um, I don't look at lenses as closely as a lot of people do. and well, I've seen some arguments that like Sony's version and Nikon's version might be like technically slightly edging it out. Um, Canon, some people's accounts have been that Canon's has had more character, and I, I'm with that. I don't think lenses need to just be perfectly, just technically perfect. Um, but all that said. The F-135, while though optically inferior, I mean, to the 50, has a look that is not replicated in any of, of my other lenses.
Okay, in your original question, you were considering a 24 to 70 and an 85. That sounds like a good combo, actually, to me. You know, um, 24 to 7 gives you everything you need. Um, well, you, you won't feel hamstringed at all. Uh, you probably won't need the extra reach. And then that 85, though, gives you a little bit of extra reach where you can shoot those close candids like I like to shoot. Um, and get a little more creative with the look of the photograph, you know, shoot it at 1.4, for example. I think that's a good way to, to do it. What's up, Trevor? Um, was uh, did you catch the podcast I did on monochrome memoirs? Or I assume that's how you found me then. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he, it's too bad he's not making content anymore. And yeah, I know. I the thing is, like, I have a very small channel, very focused on event photography and being a working professional um, and I understand if I also talked about gear more it could at least get more people to watch the channel um, it's something I've considered so long as I do it in a way that's consistent with my beliefs you know I don't want to compromise and so far I haven't um, but it's a grind Thank you for what? By the way, uncharacteristically, I shot this entire job in aperture priority. I decided to just give that a shot. Um, it's the one I'm filming on right now. It's the Canon RF 50 1.2. So you guys see I'm trying to get a balance here.
Uh, what do you mean by how am I going to select that crop? Well, why, why switch to JPEG for the job or the event? Oh, do you mean like controls wise on the keyboard and whatnot? So um, let's say I'm in an image. So I gotta limit the teaching moments here, but because I, I really do need to get this work done. But if I'm on an image, and I hit R to pull up crop and hit X, it automatically switches it to portrait mode. Yeah, you want to know as many shortcuts as possible to get the editing done as fast as possible. For the interest of saving time for yourself to get your work done faster for your client, to effectively make more money per hour. Like you can charge, you can charge 300 an hour, but if you take 12 hours to edit a three hour job, you're not actually making that much money anymore. So it's something to consider. Um, I'm sure there's some people, amateurs, that might be surprised at how quickly or little I will edit. They don't understand because they're not doing it professionally. You know? I'm not going to take like three images I absolutely love and then toil over them. Maybe later for Instagram or my portfolio, but for like the job, there's a limitation to what I have time for. And the reality is, is like, what do these images really need? They don't need a lot. Um, it comes down to like, it's like you're mostly doing that level of editing when you're like toiling over an image for yourself. Most people won't notice the difference.
whatever. It's a funny photo. This guy was funny. What's up, Rohan? It's 
just another reminder for those of you just jumping in. Um, I'll answer any questions people have if they have them. Uh, but I'm speed editing because I do have a, a deadline for these photos. I just shot them last night, but I want to get it delivered as soon as possible to free up my time. Um, I've been shooting quite a bit lately, and so it's been harder to make content. So I've been doing the live streams, which helps me create content and get some work done. But I noticed that I wasn't truly getting that much work done when I was also trying to teach. So this time I'm only gonna answer questions rather than just like use each image. I can't even talk. Use each image as a teaching opportunity. Um, but if you guys are do want to see more event photography content I've been posting a lot to my patreon page I think I posted three videos to that alone this week and I have a bunch that I'm ready to post this dog was trained to do downward dog by the way if you didn't catch that pretty wild So this was tough. They were posing all of the dogs together and you can imagine how hard it is to pose like 10 dogs. And so I shot a lot to get just to increase my chances of getting them all looking at me. Thank you, Willie. You can see one starts walking off, then another one. It's pretty funny. The better shots come later, actually. I feel like. One of the trainers gave me a squeaky toy to help get the dog's attention. Kawaii? I told myself if I book to uh, book one of these big jobs I'm bidding on, that I'm just gonna instantly book a trip to Hawaii.
Cool shirt. So I'm going to mark this image for a moment, I'm going to come back to it, I'm just going to grab more water and a quick slideshow for you guys that are just jumping in and see some of the earlier work um, while I am grabbing water. Again, happy to answer any questions people have, but I'm not using any images to try to grab a teachable moment. All right, how do you do this thing? Let's take a look. Oh, so it takes a while slideshow, apparently. Interesting. All right, that's okay. We won't do that. So I did shoot... POV footage as well, which is something I will um, share in a future video and perhaps do one of those videos where, where you can see me roaming around and grabbing shots. You can see the way I navigate a crowd, move into position, identify moments, etc. How I position myself relative to the light, that kind of thing. Gotta be a way to autoplay a slideshow. I'm literally trying to put my mug on the forward key <laughs> so that it will play. Uh, I don't want it to do any weird edits. Hang on. Oh, well, that's too fast. Okay, I'll just be right back. Give me uh, 30 seconds. I'll be right back, guys.
throwing a battery in the camera. It died. And I don't have the power source adapter thing. So I think you need a specific type of UC B, UC whatever C. Are you counting me? Well, I had to get a... All right, we're back. All right, where were we? Oh, text message, am I training tonight? I forgot about training. Um, I don't know if I'll finish this in time. All right, so I had a question. Although I don't see my camera coming back on on the stream, but on my end it shows up. Um, the question was if I get anxiety, and the answer is actually no, I do not. Um, I, if I get anxiety, I'm trying to remember where I was. If I get anxiety, I get anxiety when there's a lot of logistical issues. So, like, if I have to transport a ton of gear, like I've done, um, I've shared it on my channel, I've done uh, jobs where I had to shoot, like, 200 professional portraits over, over the course of, like, two, three days, and that kind of thing. And when there's a lot of moving parts, sometimes I do get anxious, but on the actual job, I never get anxious. There's no job that has ever really done that for me, at least not in many years. Um, let me see if I can, it's going to go crazy the screen because I want to try to figure out the webcam. Figure out why it doesn't seem to be working. Oh, somehow I paused my own live stream. That's why it's not showing up. <laughs> okay, there we go. Genius. Um, the other question I got. How long do you sp stand in one spot before moving on to the next subject? Does it depend on the individual being photographed? Okay, that's, um, that's a complex question. So maybe it's a VIP and they haven't given me anything because I'm typically following the energy of a room or a space and they haven't given me anything and so I'm just waiting. I won't linger too much and if I linger too long I'll get noticed and then they get uncomfortable. So you want to be someone people are very comfortable uh, comfortable around. You don't want to be creepy. Um, so it all depends on the circumstance. I don't just go, oh, there's another person, and I haven't photographed them yet, and stand there until they do something interesting. I'm typically l looking. I'm always monitoring everything around me. I'm really in tune with my senses so that when there's a moment, I, I just naturally start gravitating toward it. Um, so I don't linger too long. Sometimes you eventually will get really good at identifying when people are going to smile prior to them smiling. And I've talked about some of the methods I've used in different videos that I can't get into right now. I don't have the time for it. But so when you can predict when they're going to smile, you'll kind of wait for that moment, grab it, move on. I hope that answers your question. That's why it's important to do sports or something that get uh, gets you ready for game time. Yeah. That's true. That wasn't a serious shot. I was just playing around with the kid. <laughs> He's running from the camera.
sometimes it's okay to give the client options on let them decide where they look best rather than just you deciding where they look best. Um, I don't modify my coffee drinking for my work. Um, maybe if I'm really tired and I have to shoot a job at night, I'll, I'll drink an extra cup in the day, like prior. But I don't like, as a practice, always like drink coffee to get energy for an event. I tend to drink a lot in, of coffee in the morning though, and then, then I'm typically done. Disappointed I couldn't get his arm in the shot there. You got it, Willie. Um, maybe my favorite film I have would be this APX 25, very old film they don't make anymore, uh, super fine grained, and I have like a bulk roll that I individually 
roll out into 35 millimeter reels. Uh, but my go-to, I, I like Tri-X. It's such a good, versatile film. I, I can develop it in Rodinol if I want, or I can develop it in Diafine. And the Diafine will naturally push it up to like ISO 1250, 12, or 1600 even. So it's versatile. I would have loved to have filmed, shot some film on the job here. You guys know I talk a lot about always challenging myself and trying different things and finding ways to still feel creative, but not just like everything I'm doing is creative, but like novelly creative, I guess. And, but what that's been a lot of lately is like me shooting video so I can share it with you all, not so much me shooting film for myself and that kind of thing. Plus I knew it was going to be an outdoor event and I didn't want to bring my large bag with a ton of stuff in it. So I didn't really have the space for a film camera, but I do wish I had one, but I knew I knew what I was doing. I don't regret it. I made the right choice, but it would have been nice to have been able to shoot film.
Uh, no movies are coming to mind right now. I'm going to think about it, though. Yeah, I might keep extras to convert to black and white for myself. But not for the job. Who directed the new Dune?
Oops. He looks like the, um, the troll meme. <laughs> this guy's living a better life than me. This woman was live streaming me. <laughs> Hello? I'm editing my job, I'm live streaming. Okay. All right, bye. You'd think my mother would know I'm live streaming, right? Hi, Mick. Do you uh, mostly use autofocus? Lately, I've been using manual focus for group photos. I do not know why you would do that. Um, Manual focus has not been more accurate since like 1997 or something. <laughs> um, I, I'd love to hear why you would do that though. Um, I usually just auto focus on the best, like if it's a large group and they're staggered, I try to choose like someone that's in between like the extremities, like the closest person and the furthest person, farthest person. Um, and then I use auto focus that way. Uh, auto focus, especially now, it's almost like mind-numbingly good, to be honest. And it's, it kind of frustrates me because you don't even need... There's still skill involved in using autofocus effectively, but not as much as there used to be. Um, like when there was no eye detect and that kind of thing, or good servo, you know, you had to be really good at just always moving your focus point around, perfectly timing your back button focus to quickly focus and get the one shot. Um, not the continuous mode shot and all that. Um, but yeah, I don't see any value in manual focus almost ever anymore.
Um, hang on, I gotta process what you're saying real quick. So I'm I'm doing a lot at once here, Paul. All right, so for a group photo, when I'm in the pictures, I set it on a tripod, and then I get in the photo. I mean, but couldn't you just autofocus on them first and then get in the photo? Um, I'm not. 100% sure I follow, but you can also like the R6 has continuous autofocus where it will continuously track even if you're not holding the like the back button focus or your shutter halfway. Uh, that's one way you can now get an image to like let's say you need a photo of just yourself. Uh, that theoretically would be a way you could now autofocus on yourself without controlling the camera. Um, that's something I realized recently. Outside of that, I can't stand the continuous autofocus, especially if you're using a lens with a loud motor where it's going to constantly hunt and probably drain your battery. So I personally turn that off. But yeah, the autofocus on this camera is so good that I can easily hold the back button and focus and just like monitor the whole time. Whereas before, I, I wouldn't even bother until like right before I was going to take the shot. Stopped editing to play a bit of Sims. <laughs> I never played that, but I absolutely was a Sim City fanatic. I used to first play it on Super Nintendo. And then I got into it on PC for a bit. I loved that game, like, so much. I don't know why. Uh, my take on Caesar... And so I don't know anything about him, just for the record. I think I read like two paragraphs of his book when I got Brixton. <laughs> but I felt like I intuitively understood. Well, I've had dogs, but you know, I, I felt I intuitively understood how to train him and all that. So I, I, I liked what he had to say. Um, so I don't know much about him. I don't know much about his persona, etc. He seemed very engaged, very present with people. And he seemed down to earth, to be honest. That was my takeaway. Um, I finished at 7, and like he briefly left, and I was going to wait because I wanted to shoot like an individual portrait of him, just for myself, you know? But then he didn't come back, and <laughs> I was just like, ah, I'm going home. I worked hard. I'll leave it up. I'm not sure I'm going to leave this up long term, though. I, I haven't decided what I want to do with the live streams.
Oh boy. So, my old keeper rate used to be about, I, it's hard to say actually, um, I'm, I find I'm shooting more images because of the capability of my new camera where I can easily do larger bursts, and I'm experimenting again with like, and trying to take notes in a way, mental notes trying to see if I end up with more keepers or if I'm just end ending up with more editing. It's kind of a weird thing because like I'm ending up with more shots but because the autofocus is much better I can look at a grid and basically judge it on the overall composition and the expression on the people's faces and not have to zoom into the eye to make sure it's in focus because it's consistently going to be in focus for the most part. So it, it's kind of like I'm not sure if I'm saving time in editing or if it ends up being kind of if it ends up canceling itself out. Uh, so I ended up total 17 about 1700 photos. It might be too small to see in the stream. 1748 1007 1748. This corgi was so cute. I'm not like a corgi fanatic, but this corgi was cute. Some people are like crazy about them. How many photos does the client get? Uh, no, I do not provide a guaranteed range. Um, I'll educate my clients on what uh, what about my range will be. Um, but I explain to them, I, I educate them on the fact that I'm not shooting for a set number of images. I'm not limiting what I deliver. What I do is I just try to maximize my coverage. And that can often end up being about 200 images an hour or so. Um, but I'm never just raising the camera to just take a photograph. I'm always shooting with intention. Um, you guys, if you want to see about how I describe my methods, like. I do have a section in my website. Not everyone's going to read it, but if you go to mickmillman.com, you can see how I describe the way I work. And I probably include this info on my FAQ, but in all honesty, my FAQ is not so much for 
not my client um, because I think very few people end up reading it. It's more for search engine optimization. So here, I'll give you guys a link though if you're interested. Here we go. Um, a few things I'll also mention while I'm here. Um, of course, you could, if you're interested, if you're very serious about learning event photography, you can go through all my videos. I have an event photography playlist. But I also take all of what I feel are the most helpful videos and I put them on one page on my website. It's a bit more curated in the sense that I'll describe what each video is about and what I think you would potentially get out of it. Um, and that's, here's a link to that. So that way you don't have to watch every single video. Um, I mean, I think you should. I don't make filler videos. I really try to make meaningful videos. Um, I've got to change my, my battery again on my camera. So I'm just going to take a second to do that. So if there was ever a time to program a dial to swap between the animal eye autofocus and human eye, this job would have been it. Um, I had to go back and forth pretty often. Yeah, I, I, I reject a lot of the old like ways of doing photography um, since the beginning. I like the idea that you're paying an event photographer or a wedding photographer like a creative fee and then you have to buy all the images it's an outdated model um, that really was born out of like film photography in which it's just a different model um, that made sense for the times yeah this guy was cute <laughs> look at him And your clients will appreciate that too, you know? I, I run my business the way I would, I think about like, if I were looking for a photographer, would I wanna hire this guy, you know?
<laughs> hey, I'm almost done, I think. Awesome. This guy was funny all night. Oops. Double, 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 not even double fisting. Single fisting two wine glasses. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was holding it for someone. But he was a ham. So here's the one mistake I made uh, that was pretty frustrating. I think I was shooting something else and I was at F9 um, where it would be okay to handhold. And then I saw a moment and I kind of missed a lot of it because of that. Because my shutter was too slow. But I think there were a few that will work. That works. Three hours. I don't know if... Yeah, I did mention it. Three hours. Four to seven. It's like I got lucky. I got something sharp-ish. No, I'm pretty sharp. At 125th. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, I know. White shirt, two glasses of wine in one hand. Oops.
I feel like my computer is slowing down more. If anyone wants to be my rich benefactor, let me know. I need a new computer. So here you can see I did catch my mistake right away, and so I switched to a wider aperture. So you guys remember we're balancing a tight edit with a tight delivery, getting it the files to your client as soon as possible, depending on you know when they need it. And so I could absolutely edit these down a little bit more, um, this collection, I mean. But I'm just I don't know if I really, you know, they're nice moments, all of them. Maybe I don't need all three here. But I'm not going to obsess over it. Yeah, we're good. I think I just want to change the color. Yeah. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> Towards my new computer. <laughs> okay, I only need um, a thousand more of those or so. No, that's a lot. <laughs> 200 more, maybe. Yeah, um, my plan is next big job I shoot, I book. I take a trip to Hawaii or something. I'm thinking Hawaii right now. I buy my a new 70 to 200. Then I buy a new computer. And if I have to get a new another backup camera, I might do that. Though you know, you actually told me I probably didn't need a new computer, but I think it's more like quality of life and like I can get by with the computer I use but my workflow is slower, live streaming is a bit tougher. I hear the M1 is pretty amazing. Like the last few years I've been, I just like Apple because it works for me. I know it, it's, it's all intuitive. But like I've considered switching to PC, but 
I'm hearing good things about that new chip. I mean, right now my laptop is a PC. It's a XPS. But I never bothered to learn how to use it. I just don't care. Like, I, I just want... A, at this point, I just want a camera, a computer, etc. that works. I'm, I'm, I don't like tinkering that much anymore. I'm running a PC 70% of the time now and still can't switch completely. Too much hassle migrating all over to Windows, getting new software licenses, all that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I know the R6 has dual slot recording for photos and video. Do you always bring a backup second camera? Yeah. Um, so I've talked about this before. I really encourage new photographers to ignore these black and white thinkers in forums and comment sections where they'll say something. If you're asking that question, you shouldn't be shooting professionally. Or they'll be like, if you don't own a backup up camera, you have no business being a photographer. Things like that. And like, okay, you're going to tell that to maybe like an 18-year-old kid starting out that can't afford one, that kind of thing. Um, but so I don't want to discourage people from pursuing this until they own a backup camera. Uh, you are taking a risk. I've never had a camera completely fail on me, though. Um, yeah, I've never had one. I've had to do battery pulls. You know, the camera, it solves a lot of problems, a battery pull. But no, I've never had a camera fail on me. Um, but if your primary camera, for example, has a lot of a high shutter count, the shutter could, could could theoretically die on you. And so even if it's a, a Rebel or something very small and cheap, that would be a good idea to have. Uh, but eventually, yeah, you do want to have a backup camera. Um, if the backup camera is only the bare minimum to get the job done, whether it's like an old full-frame camera or like a Rebel or even like if you're a Canon shooter, you can get like a Canon M50 for like 500 bucks, get the adapter and use all your L lenses with it. I, you know, I think that's fine. You don't need two camera bodies simultaneously to do the job. And unless I thought I would be running two camera bodies simultaneously, I probably would have left the, my 5D Mark III in the car. Um, because I don't anticipate my camera breaking and it's not like a wedding where like you if your camera breaks and you have to run to the car you might miss the first kiss you know it's not quite like that um is that your that's your only camera the m50 uh, Nick sorry I'm like losing focus on my edit But if you guys have questions for me, like get them in now because I'm almost done. Um, as soon as I get to the end, I'm going to run down the images once more. Um, just take a quick look and maybe do like a quick calling. Did I finish my train of thought? I'm not sure at this point. Just if you guys, if I start talking and then I like drift off and I don't make my point, just tell me. Um, it can be tough when I'm trying to do two things at once. Oh, Canon M50, what should my next camera be? Um, well, if you like Canon and you're going to stick with Canon, and I'd have to know what 
your intended uses, you know? What do you want to do? What's your budget? That kind of thing. Well, that's kind of weird, the color. On one image adjusted, but not the others. That's weird. Let's use that as a starting point. For the most part, as far as color correction goes and everything, I tend to correct for how it actually looked more than like what I want it to look like. So um, I don't mind my dusk images, for example, to be a little darker, to have those magenta hues associated with it, that kind of thing. Lesson, oh, Nick. What's up? I didn't connect which Nick you were. Uh, and do events BJJ pictures. Um, less than a thousand. Uh, a 7D Mark II would be my personal pick. Um, if not that, I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I really would lean toward a 7D Mark II. Um, because all the EF lenses you would potentially purchase for it would then upgrade nicely into a full frame camera if you're buying like full frame EF lenses. Um, it's under a thousand. You could probably get one for like eight, nine hundred, maybe a thousand. And Thanks for your Patreon support, by the way. It was very generous. I, I look forward to being able to help you out. Um, yeah, if you're sticking with Canon, what else would be an option? I, I mean, maybe... That's a tough one. My advice used to be to go for, like, a full-framed... Not a full-frame body, but a professional build body, meaning all the dials are roughly going to be in the same place if you were to upgrade. So, like, I'm not a fan of a Rebel because they didn't even have a, an, a dedicated control for aperture, for example. And so you had to hold a button down to, and then use your shutter to change aperture, that kind of thing. Um, so I always recommended people get in the habit of using a professional tool. Um, and the 7D, I think, really fits that bill. But nowadays, like, tech, it's kind of a tough thing like you can get more tech in a less professional body of course you could get like the rp now if you're not looking to buy soon i bet that rp will be replaced by the time you're ready to buy and you can buy a used rp or buy a new R uh, the new version of it um i think the rp doesn't that go for like a thousand bucks so that would be a good option and then you'd get all the modern technology it used to be i used to like it's, um, it is getting a little bit harder to recommend a DSLR because while you are you will develop skills using it, a lot of those skills won't transfer over. Um, it may be like wasted development in a way. Like I've talked about this quite a bit, how with the DSLR I got really good at always using my controller to position my tiny little focus point on the eye and I was always repositioning focus, reposition focus, always moving it around as my subject matter moved. Um, Whereas now, if you have a camera with great eye detect focus, you won't even need that skill as much. Um, so it's a tough one. I feel like I probably did not help. <laughs> I think you can get a 7D Mark II for under a thousand. I mean, I'm willing to sell. My, I already promised it to one of my subscribers, but I would sell it for less to someone I know. I've always been like, I don't want a nickel and dime, like I'd rather give it to a good person, you know, that's going to appreciate it than like make more money selling a used camera. It's always been my thoughts, you know. Like if one of the people that assist me 
was like, can I buy your camera for 500 bucks? I'd be like, yeah. You know, I know it's going to a good place. But I value people more than money. You know, some people value money. Yeah, the Canon M50, I was surprised by how much I liked that camera, actually. Um, especially for someone that's an enthusiast. The downfall of it, again, assuming you're putting like professional lenses on it, it was pretty funny. It's this tiny little camera, and I would put like 70 to 200s on it, and it worked great, actually. Um, I don't go... You know, if you watch YouTubers, they're going to quibble over, oh, well, this one has this much more dynamic range, blah, 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 blah. And most people aren't going to notice the difference. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to always have better specs, but uh, this was actually a friend who I ran into. So these are not going to be part of the delivery. So I mark them accordingly with num uh, yellow, that's how I know personally, and then I will select everything but the yellow for when I deliver. Paul is selling his RP this week. What are you moving up to again? I don't recall if you told me. I mean, I bet a Canon R is a good option too. I bet that price has come down. I think you, they've been up for like 1500 bucks. I wouldn't recommend anyone go into credit card debt, um, but if you're gonna use the camera for eight years and not upgrade, you know, then it might be worth it to spend more and just get like the camera that will last a good eight years. There's a lot of ways to look at it that are valid. Isn't the RP only a thousand bucks new? You know what, I'm gonna go with the original. I'm just going to do a quick scroll. Quick scroll, then uh, looking. Often, like, you have to go through them several times to get a really, really tight edit because you can be a little too married to your own work. Um, but the more you chop off out, the easier it is to narrow down. You have to whittle it down. Um, I could spend a lot of time on this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to spend just an okay amount of time, a quick amount, to go through them real quick because I really want to get these files to my client ASAP.
Yeah, I mean, if you need those video specs of the R5, it makes sense. You know, I have one little, um, one thing I've noticed about the R6, and I think it's a mirrorless camera critique, not an R6 critique. It does overheat. And I don't mean just like um, where it won't shoot 4K or something. I mean, it gets hot. You feel the heat of that camera. It's not like the 5D where you don't feel the heat ever. Like, it never heats up. It never heated up for me. Um, maybe like a half a degree warmer than the ambient environment. Um, really, I don't think I'm exaggerating here. Whereas, like, I feel the heat of my R6. Now, it's not going to burn me, nothing like that, but it gets warm. Okay, I gotta focus a little bit more. I'm not getting my exposure right here. There we go. If I book start booking these really big jobs I'm bidding on, you know, things are gonna come back. I never buy a more camera than I need and I'm not a big upgrader as I've talked about but because I want to very quickly be able to upload photos live um, I'll need a camera that can use a transmitter and I'm not sure which cameras are compatible with that although you can they all have Wi-Fi but I think the transmitter buffs up that Wi-Fi speed uh, but I might even look at the R3 if it's a necessary purchase. The R doesn't overheat. The original R? I, I find that hard to believe. But maybe, maybe because the specs are not, you know, you're not shooting. But it's not like, I don't do a lot of burst photography. I mean, not excessively. Like, I'm not, the demand isn't very high, I don't think, that I put on the camera. I don't know. I'm just going to both of those. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think you're you're just not using it very much, if or you haven't noticed. But I can't imagine it's not heating up. It it has to do with the smaller form factor, I'm pretty sure. And I and mirrorless cameras are more um, demanding as far as um, energy goes. So I don't know. Okay, let's pick it up. So, um, I think, so as far as like content coming up goes, like I was working really, really hard on these big videos and it got to the point where I worked so hard on them that I needed a break and I've stepped away from it. Um, and so I think, so I want to give you guys all of the videos I'm currently like working on, but I'll tell you what I think will come next. So I am going to do a decade long review of the 5D Mark III. It's almost 10 years, um, so it's going to be about a decade of use. I bought that camera on day one. Actually, day minus one. Somehow I, they sold it to me a day early at the local shop. Um, I used it. I built my career, really. My, my mid-career was entirely built with that camera, so I want to make that video a bit of an ode to it. 
I think it's a vet, very valid camera to this day to use professionally. Um, then I want to do an R6 impressions video, not because I want to do a hot, exciting like gear review video, but uh, I think I actually have, you don't get too many um, impression videos from people that have an actual perspective as a professional photographer. There are a few though, um, but none have talked about that camera as far as it works, how well it works for events, that kind of thing. I want to talk about the transition um, I've had to make using that camera from a DSLR and I still use a DSLR. Um, I'm doing a video on what I learned, what Bruce Lee taught me or what I, I'm working on the title, uh, what Bruce Lee and martial arts have taught me about photography which I'm really excited about. So it's gonna take a lot of philosophies from Bruce Lee and martial arts and how they pertain to photography, how I've grown as a photographer taking what I've learned from martial arts or Bruce Lee. And then, um, because those videos are really taking me a while, I'm gonna do uh, another on the job type video. And so I'm still open to suggestions on what people would like to see. I've done a, diff a few different job review type videos. Some just POV footage and then I add in the photos I'm taking. So you see me walking around, um, you see me snap a photo, then you see the image. I can do more where I break down the job and I discuss it, like what I was going for, the challenges of it, um, what made the job unique, did I grow from it as a photographer, etc. Um, I can do what I do in my live streams and just go through the images. That's an option as well. So I do appreciate feedback. I want to make content that people find helpful. You think I'm lean? Um, I think that I don't want to like make anyone feel bad about their attributes, whether it's mental, physical, etc. We all have different attributes, and I think you just have to lean into what you're good at and work work on what you're not. You know, uh, I find that being leaner and being graceful makes it easier to navigate crowds. I pr I think I have a pretty good height where I don't. I can and I'm able to squat and get low pretty easily um, but if you were taller you'd be able to get shoot above people but then it would be more taxing on you when you have to get lower you're either gonna hunch down um, that kind of thing it's just a uh, you know there's a lot of ways to look at it Um, one thing, so I've talked about fasting on the job, you know, there's some evidence where they say you perform mental and physical challenges better on, in a fasted state. Um, uh, even actually like, especially for me, physical challenges, when I fast until like 12 and then train jujitsu and then I eat after, I feel amazing. But for more cerebral stuff, I, I, I start hitting a wall at some point, and so I think being able to fast is a good idea for this type of work, but you don't necessarily want to do it on purpose. Like, I did not eat yesterday. I was working all day. Um, I didn't have time to eat before going to the job. I didn't re really eat until the end of the job, and no matter how many tacos I tried to eat, it wasn't going to be enough calories to make up for the deficiency. And then I got home late and I had to start my edit. I had to let Brixton out. And so it turned out I didn't really have any food in the house, which I kind of knew. And so I didn't really eat yesterday. And then I had to wake up and start after doing a few important things, I immediately got to work on this. So I had not, I have not had food today. Um, 
I don't recommend any of this. <laughs> you know, a lot of what Bruce Lee talks about, I think, anyone who trains in martial arts and will intuitively understand at a point you don't have to actually have Bruce Lee tell you it but he was good at phrasing it you know some people know how to articulate things better than others but it doesn't mean someone who's inarticulate doesn't intuitively understand it Um, you should maybe question why a meal makes you tired. Meals probably shouldn't make you tired unless you're eating the wrong things, you know? If you eat a giant bowl of pasta, maybe. If you're going through blood sugar spikes. Um, when I eat the wrong things, I get tired. Does anyone know who this is? I'm not sure if I should know who that is. Not Caesar, but the woman. Um, I did a live stream where I did I think show my oldest work um, that would be a hard video for me to do though again like I have to locate all my old work and it's not hidden but uh, it seems like a lot of work um, I've grown a lot as a photographer but when I look back at my old work and I actually had to do that last night like I just got off the job and I had a race home and I had to prepare I had to create an email with all of the jobs I've ever shot for a client that I've worked for for 10 years, but they unfortunately had a tragedy in their family, um, a loss in their family, and so they needed photos from every job I ever shot from them, for them, and so I had to put it all in one email for them. I gladly did that. Um, and I looked at some of my old work, and I'm like, hey, that's not bad. Um, you're harsher on yourself when you shoot it, but... When you're more removed, you tend I tend to appreciate my work more. It's kind of like when I see other people's work, like my own students, I've been like almost envious isn't quite the right word, but like almost envious where I'm like, wow, I mean, that's the kind of shot I wish I shot. And then later on, I'm like, I've shot work like that. I, I just hold them to a different standard than I hold myself to. You know, uh, I'm gonna be more critical of my, uh, myself but when I haven't looked at my work in a long time, I'm less critical when I look at it retrospectively, kind of. Okay, I don't know if I'm making sense. I've got to eat. So here, I definitely could edit down more, but... It's a man of the hour. If they get more shots of him, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, I read the, uh, is it Tao or Tao? Tao, right? I read that many years ago. It's a very good book. I'm not sure you've done, okay, I answered that one. My fine artwork. So I didn't, I missed that part of your question. Um, that might be interesting. I have, like, pulled out my old prints from when I was in college, um, some of it's pretty good. A lot of it wasn't really. It's interesting. Um, teaching 
So I teach in normal times at two different art centers. One is in Canoga Park, which is, you know, like middle class, lower middle class maybe. Um, and one is like East Hollywood, Los Feliz, which is like more, you get more hip people living out there. And I've found that the kids that go to Barnstall Art Center in East Hollywood, a lot of their parents are artists, directors, producers, graphic artists, creative types. And they're shooting really creative stuff. And I'm like, it's so interesting. But me and my friends, when I was like in high school and early college, we weren't shooting anything interesting, if I'm honest. Um, I think I just didn't know how. I think maybe when you are seeing other people around you create, can be a, have a positive impact. But like, so I, I actually, I think most of my stuff was trash until, until like, maybe sophomore year in college. And then I I had a few good ideas, but I think most of my good ideas came after college. I'm a smoker anyway, so what does that matter? <laughs> okay. Um, but really, I don't eat much meat at all. Just salami sticks in my bag on a shoot works wonders. Yeah. I'm just, I was so hungry on every job when I was younger, and I'd go to these weddings, and it, it would be like 11 hour days often, and oh my god, I would be starving, and just starving, but you don't get to eat till 10 sometimes, like you eat after everyone else has eaten, eaten, ate, after everyone ate, whatever. Um, and I never went and bought like power bars and I should have, I should have, I never prepared, just showed up every job without eating and starved. Now I would do that more effectively because I can fast easily. I don't eat sugar or carbs really. But back then my favorite thing in the world was sugar and carbs. So I'd always be hungry and, it, and I'd always be crashing and made it really hard to work, to be honest. Oh, I didn't even read that one. Uh, World Health Organization has stated that processed meats are class one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I avoid that stuff. But um, you're a smoker anyway. You know what? You might as well do heroin too then. I'm not equating smoking to heroin. I'm just joking about the attitude. I'll keep them both. Are you asking uh, what I would eat back in the day? Uh, refined or complex? I mean like bad carbs. <laughs> I actually, I'm not against carbs. I wish I could eat healthy carbs, but the vast majority of them I, I'm intolerant to is what I've found. I don't do it for like, it's not like, oh, I have a healthy, I do it to be healthy. I end up pretty healthy, but it'd be better if I could eat a few more things. I mean, I, I'm healthy, but my point is it's not, it's, it's a diet out of necessity, not health for me.
Well, you know, when it comes to smoking, I could imagine that could be a problem if you need to smoke like every 30 minutes or hour. Um, if you have to shoot an event, you can't walk away and smoke. And it would not reflect well if they, they can see you doing that, even if you were able to sneak off here and there. Not out of like judgment, but you just don't want to see like the guy you hired like standing off and smoking or like standing somewhere and drinking a beer or standing far away and just looking at their phone every hour. I used to check my phone a lot more when I was younger. I was hooked to that whole like checking thing. But now at a job, I might not pull my phone out for like four hours. And if I am, it's more to check if my client is texting me. Sometimes they'll be texting you at the event, like, hey, this is about to happen or whatever, or to make sure I'm keeping track of the time if that's important. Alrighty. Let's go. Um, the only path, you can look at what Johns Hopkins is, uh, the studies they've been doing on quitting smoking. I'm not going to mention what it is. All right, guys, if you have any questions for me, um, get them in. I'm going to scroll a little quicker down to the end. Then I'm going to start my export because um, I need to get the export done so that I can then move on to the upload. So I don't have all the time in the world. Um, so get those questions in. Then I need to drink water and eat. So I'll do one more reminder too. <laughs> yes, shrooms. Uh, that's what they're studying, and it has like a I think it's like a 75% to 90% success rate in helping people quit smoking. For I think the study followed them for like six months. I can barely talk. I'm so thirsty right now. Um, So, all oh right, I kept one because I might make black and whites later. That's why I, I'm a little less tight with the edit, because I might make black and whites, but not for the delivery, but for myself. Yep. It's really hard to quit anything. It really is. Like even in sugar is incredibly addictive. That wasn't easy, you know. But you, you just have to get it's easier in my opinion to get over like one massive mountain than like having to face hills every day, you know? Or you win the war not a battle because I can't do, I can't do moderation personally. I can't eat a little bit of sugar. I can I have the willpower to not eat any, but if I have a little bit, it's like every day I have to like, oh, am I gonna have that tiny piece of cake? Am I gonna do this? Am I gonna do that? And it's taxing. And for me, 
I'd rather just win the war once and then not have to fight it anymore. It's funny that we're all talking about this, not photography. I don't know why these look darker. Mick, I would love to see a BTS of your events. Um, Paul, go to um, elaborate on what you would like to see specifically, what you mean by that, but you can go to my Patreon page. If you're a supporter, you can, um, I, I'm now uploading POV footage of ev almost every job I shoot. Um, I'll probably upload one as soon as I have time to do it because they're all up on YouTube, but they're not visible. So I post them to Patreon. But if you want POV footage and you can see how I work and watch how I maneuver a crowd, watch how I place myself, you can see my timing, how I place myself relative to my light sources, etc. I said earlier, I don't know how many of you guys were here, but that reminds me of the um, troll meme. This woman was live streaming. Okay. Let's go a little quicker. So maybe you just need to always be doing photography so you don't smoke. Thank you, David. Live streaming is kind of interesting. The people that like really appreciate what I do, really appreciate it, I think, but then like then there's the rest of the people. I've like lost subscribers to live streaming actually. It's weird. It is what it is, but I I've thought about it and I'm like it's helping the right people, the people I care about the people that really want to learn, etc. Okay. I'm getting so hungry. The double fister or the single fister guy. I'll pull down the highlights a bit. <laughs> Is uh watching what do you guys get out of like watching the editing? Is it the knowledge? Um, do you like the community? Would you say that it can be motivating to watch other people work, that kind of thing? Yeah, check them out. Um, I've done POV videos that are also on my YouTube channel. Uh, I decided that on Patreon I am going to create exclusive content because I have to... My whole life I've taken care of other people that I've forgotten to take care of myself and I need to take care of myself. I need to make this sustainable. You know, like I can't devote the thousands of hours I've been devoting um, at such an expense to myself, which isn't necessarily financial. At times it has been, I've bought stuff specifically for YouTube. It's more like my time and ener energy. So I really need this to be sustainable. Um, and so because I don't make the gear review videos, I get massive amounts of views and I don't do affiliate links, I don't do sponsored content, I, I need to rely on Patreon to keep this going. And so I needed to incentivize people to become Patreon supporters. And also I felt like, you know what, it's fair, even though like when you sign up for Patreon, I can, they're at different levels, I'm able to support you with portfolio reviews. Um, I can help you write your content, your SEO, um, et cetera. 
uh, job reviews, all of that. But I felt like, you know what, for everyone that just supports me, I want to give them something extra. And so it seemed fair that I I do have a little bit of a paywall as far as like being able to see all that bonus content. But even $5 unlocks all the content. So if you guys think I've helped you on like one job, if I've helped you book a single job, hopefully like $5 will be worth it to you. If you literally can't afford $5, don't give me your money. I don't want it. I really don't. I, I'm, I really resent the impression YouTube gives your everyday person that like we all have disposable money and it can be upgrading cameras left and right and swapping and changing brands and all of that. You know, I love when you wake up one morning and your entire feed is about the $1,400 affordable lens. And I know that's not the case for most people. Okay, so sorry if that was a tangent. I'm gonna hit Control Command A, which will select all of my images. I will make sure I'm in the library mode. I'm going to export and I verbalize everything I do because repetition is the best way to learn I find for people. I, as a teacher, I don't have to devote a day to teaching Lightroom. I basically verbalize everything I do every time I do critiques. I upload everyone's work into Lightroom and people learn through that repetition. Okay, so I always do, as far as um, jobs go, same folder as original. I do a high resolution gallery at times, well always, and I will also do a social media sized gallery if they'd like one. Um, so I label it JPEGs high resolution, add to catalog, click off resize. This is a question I don't know if you leave this blank what it will do. I assume it's going to leave its uh, native resolution. Um, but the real th wonder, the thing I'm really wondering if um, I had it at 72 for social media files and then I click off resize I noticed it doesn't gray out so I don't know why that is and I've wondered so I always get rid of it maybe someone has the answer <laughs> I've been <laughs> needing to google that for about 10 years um, alright subfolder add to catalog we're gonna convert to, J to JPEG we hit export when that's all done I drag it into Smug Mug. That'll, that will take probably two hours or so, and I'm done. So I'll read the questions if there are any and answer them, and then I'm going to go. And, uh, I feel good. I got all my work done from yesterday. Um, how long have I been streaming? 61 minutes. I started editing about like 20 minutes before that, though, and then I realized I should stream it. Okay. A bit of all. I don't. I don't even really know, but I guess I keep watching. <laughs> there must be something, and I, always, and I always liked your in-the-moment shots more than artificial stuff. So if you believe in something and you continuously pursue it and you, you get what you put out, I've always put out these candid moments and interactions, and if you bother to read my info section, you'll know that's what I'm about to. And because of that, I've been getting clients where they call me and they're like, we're really looking for something and they're describing what I do, you know? It's like a perfect fit. So you have to consider like, what is your vision? And if you embrace that vision and you put it out there, there will be clients that will find you that specifically want that. Like this job was a job made in heaven for me in a way. They're like, yeah, we need some wide shots, establish the place. They. The purpose of these images are varied. Um, they're going to use them for in-house, maybe some marketing. They're going to use it to highlight the venue to other potential clients. I photographed this event on behalf of Westfield, not um, Caesar Milan, not Nat Geo, not the producers or anything like that. And so they just wanted to capture the vibe, the energy of the event, meaning candids, those natural moments, etc. I asked, do you need me to cover the step and repeat? They're like, no, we don't even want you to really like, don't hang out there too much because we don't want you to get tied down because people are going to start asking you, oh, can you take a shot? Can you take a shot of this? Can you get our photo? Um, 
so they were looking to for what I typically do. Just a reminder, that's the bread and butter of what I do, but it doesn't mean I don't shoot like cocktail hour, like group shots. I do approach people and say, hey, can I grab a shot of you? I did not do that here because they specifically made it known that they didn't need that kind of thing. So it was a great job for me. So put out what you want to do. Like if you want to shoot this, t um, you know, you got to really c go all out, like embrace your vision, really. Okay. Uh, David Knight, watching you edit, I realized I need to spend a little less, t less time editing my files. I seem to be married to images on my shot, on my shoots. Um, yeah, maybe you have, I don't know, I don't recall if you've mentioned on my channel before, if you're a full-time pro. Sorry, my camera just died, but you guys can hear me. I don't know if you've mentioned if you're a full-time pro or not, that kind of thing. Um, but I feel like if you're a full-time professional, you don't have the time to do that. Um, you just don't. Um, you know, one of the reasons among many, it's not the most important, but one of the reasons I really try to be technically proficient is to reduce the amount of time I edit. It's like the better you are at photography, the less time you have to spend on it. Paul, I love the community of the live session. I love how open you are to all conversations. I feel like I'm hanging out with you while I learn photography. It's a win-win situation. Thank you, Paul. Pre appreciate that. Um, and then Bosnian Vines. So you don't just correct your pictures for clients like exposure highlights, etc. Um, or do you edit them stylistically with color manipulation? No, I, I pr pretty much don't. Um, now, if you have haze or something and you therefore from a technical because of a tech uh, so okay how do i phrase all this um you know let me pop a battery in real quick if i have one left just hang with me guys i'm not sure this battery has juice To any rich benefactors out there, I need uh, to get the USB adapter so I can power the camera that way. All right. Looks like I have some juice. Um, it depends on the job. Like if you want to watch uh, one of my live sessions from a week or two ago, I spent a lot more time on the black and whites. That was partially for you guys um, and for myself not so much for the client. Um, <clears throat> I'm correcting for color and I'm not manipulating my color almost ever, but you have to understand how light changes color, how direction of light and quality of light will change the color of the image. Uh, furthermore, the time of day, which ties into quality. So later in the evening, you're gonna get especially like what I love about the Canon 135, it really emphasizes those like warm magenta hues at, in that blue hour kind of blue to golden hour, then blue hour um, transition. Um, so yeah, for the most part, short answer, I'm just correcting. All right, I'm gonna give it like 10 seconds. If another question pops in, well, I'll have to give it 20 for the lag. Um, I'll answer it, but if not, I'll call it a day. Um, yeah, I don't have too much more to add. Um, all the usual stuff, again, I do have a resource page on my website where I take my favorite videos that I think would be most beneficial to you and I put it on one, one page. I would look into that. I'm gonna start a mailing list so I can more effectively get information out to people. Um, but I would check that out. But that said, all of my videos I feel are valuable to people or I wouldn't make them. Um, there is no filler video on my channel, really. Um, if you want to support the channel, a simple like and subscribe goes a long way. If you would like some additional help, please check out my Patreon page. Even at the $5 level, my camera died again, but even at the $5 level, it will unlock more content. Um, and I will, you still can email me once a month. I believe I have that as a, as a perk. Um, eventually, I'm, some of the... Oh, I hope I didn't. Eventually, I am like the $60 level, that's gonna be a limited thing because I can't give you an hour for $60. Um, 
you know I can't do that for like 20 people I wouldn't have the time um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be worth it if I'm honest it would take too much time away from my actual work so that's about it all I've got for you guys thank you for watching I really appreciate you checking in you guys have a good day happy shooting